Democratic lawmakers, including the House Democratic leadership, are smearing Ilhan Omar over comments she made that are completely accurate. This, again, is an attempt to squash any criticism of the far right-wing Israeli government, but this coming from Democrats, who should be critical of war crimes being committed by the right-wing Israeli government. So let me get to what this is all about. And actually, I covered I covered the clip of this uh, on Monday. I'll show you in a second. But first, it's this tweet. So Ilhan Omar tweeted out here on Monday saying, we, we must have the same level of accountability and justice for all victims of crimes against humanity. We have seen unthinkable atrocities committed by the U.S., Hamas, Israel, Afghanistan, and the Taliban. I asked Blinken, Secretary Blinken, where people are supposed to go for justice. So I covered this clip on Monday. I will link to this video uh, above and below on YouTube. Biden gives Palestinians the middle finger during Ilhan Omar questioning, so you, you'll learn more about what this question was about. But do you even know? <laughs> do you, can you see here what the problem is? Because it's a unless you are a far right-wing Democrat that blindly thinks the U.S. can do no wrong, there is nothing, clearly nothing wrong with this statement here. But the issue that these Democrats have are the fact that they view this as an analogy comparing the U.S. to Hamas. So this is the New York Times. The analogy prompted outrage from a dozen Jewish Democrats in the House. They issued a statement saying that equating the United States and Israel to Hamas and the Taliban is as offensive as it is misguided and in congressional parlance usually meant to elicit an apology. They asked her to clarify her words. So <laughs> let's get I'm going to get to, by the way, uh, a clip. I'm going to get to some reactions before I get to all that, though. Let's just let's dissect this tweet. So their issue is with this part specifically. We have seen unthinkable atrocities committed by the U.S., Hamas, Israel, Afghanistan, and the Taliban. The only accurate criticism of this statement here, the only accurate criticism is that, in fact, the U.S. and Israel have killed more civilians than Hamas and the Taliban. So if you're going to have any criticism of this tweet, it should actually be that it's not holding the U.S. and Israel accountable enough. Not the fact that it's comparing them to Hamas and the Taliban. No, you have to acknowledge factually the U.S. government and the Israeli government have killed more civilians than either Hamas or the Taliban. That is a fact. If that bothers you, I'm sorry, but that's a fact. So... Let me get to uh, the reactions here. House Democratic leadership puts out a statement attacking Ilhan Omar, saying her remark, quote, foments prejudice and undermines progress toward a future of peace and security for all. <laughs> this is the same Democratic leadership that is unwilling to call out the right wing Israeli government's uh, 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 war crimes. But here they'll call out Ilhan Omar for calling out those war crimes. Let me actually read through their statement here, the quote. So leadership said, quote, legitimate criticism of the policies of both the United States and Israel is protected by the values of free speech and democratic debate. And indeed, such criticism is essential to the strength to strength and uh, to the strength and health of our democracies. But drawing false equivalencies between democracies like the U.S. and Israel and groups that engage in terrorism like Hamas and the Taliban foments prejudice and undermines progress toward a future of peace and security for all. Again, please tell me, if you're calling out terrorism from Hamas and the Taliban, which, yes, they have committed terrorist acts, how can you not see that the U.S. and the Israeli government have committed more? They have killed more civilians. So if you're calling out the terrorism of Hamas and, and the Taliban, then why can't you also call out the terrorism of the U.S. government and the Israeli government? So again, this is, these people have to know they're full of shit. They have to. And this is simply done as a, an attempt here to squash criticism of the far right-wing Israeli government by throwing Ilhan Omar under the bus for a completely accurate, for a completely accurate statement. So Ilhan Omar reacted to the criticism saying it's shameful for colleagues who call me when they need my support to now put out a statement asking for clarification and not just call, meaning call her. The Islamophobic tropes in this statement are offensive. The constant harassment and silencing from the signers of this letter is unbearable. This is how you know 
the criticism from Democratic lawmakers is bullshit because they did not even reach out to her. When they when when Ilhan Omar reached out to them to, to clarify her statements, they never even got back to her. Instead, decided to release this statement. So more on that from uh, New York Times. A House Democratic aide familiar with the back and forth said Ms. Omar's anger stemmed from her treatment by the dozen colleagues who public, uh, publicly upbraided her. She had heard they were going to publicly call for a clarification of her remarks and reached out to some of them several times on Wednesday. They did not respond before their public chastisement, said the aide, who spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe the private discussions. So they did not even respond to Ilhan Omar. She reached out to clarify those statements. They didn't get back to her. Because again, this is not about looking for clarification. This is about throwing somebody under the bus in an, att uh, in an attempt to squash criticism of a far right-wing Israeli government that, for some reason, the Democratic Party continues supporting. So some reactions here online. Boston Psychology PhD here tweets out, The U.S. and Israel have both engaged in illegal, brutal military occupations for decades on end. Both managed to kill far more innocents than Hamas or the Taliban ever will. What is this saying other than it is forbidden to compare the noble colonizers to the colonized savages? Exactly. This from Anna Kasparian. The U.S. has orchestrated coups in countries like Guatemala on behalf of business interests, which led to the slaughter of countless indigenous people and brought us to the migrant crisis today. Pretending our war crimes are somehow better than the war crimes of others is pathetic. And this from Z Squirrel. So I'm going to play this clip from Noam Chomsky in a second here, but uh, Z Squirrel writes... The entire Western professional media and political class acts all shocked and dismayed when people like Ilhan Omar tell the truth about U.S. empire because, as Chomsky says, they literally can't comprehend applying the principles they apply to others to themselves. So check out this clip. If you take a poll among U.S. intellectuals, support for bombing Afghanistan is just overwhelming. Uh, how many of them think that you should bomb Washington uh, because of the U.S. war against Nicaragua, let's say? or Cuba, or Turkey, or anyone else. If anyone were to suggest this, they'd be considered insane. But why? I mean, I mean if one is right, why is the other wrong? Uh, when you try to get someone to talk about this question, they just will try. They can't comprehend what your question is. Because you cannot comprehend that we should apply to ourselves the standards you apply to others. That is incomprehensible. Now, you know, there, there couldn't be a moral principle more elementary i mean all i have to do is read george bush's favorite philosopher you know um, there's a definition famous definition in the gospels of the hypocrite I mean, the hypocrite is the person who refuses to apply to himself the standards he applies to others by that standard just you know the entire commentary uh, and discussion of the war so-called war on terror is pure hypocrisy virtually without exception. Can anybody understand that? No. Can't understand that. Great comments there from uh, Noam Chomsky. Of course, this was, you know, shot years ago. But uh, he's exactly right. The hypocrisy here is so obvious, so blatant. Yet they go out there, Democratic leadership goes out there and acts like they're all high and mighty, calling, uh, calling out Ilhan Omar when they are clearly in the wrong. Last thing here, I wanted to just point out the headline of this New York Times piece that I referenced earlier uh, with that quote, this is the headline. So Ilhan Omar again sets off a fight among Democrats. But this point was made, great point made here by uh, Beth Miller, who said, imagine if we lived in a world where the headline was, quote, member of Congress demands answers from State Department for victims of war crimes. Because that's what this is about. Again, if you want a deeper dive on that, um, watch my video, again, linked above and below. But just the, the dishonesty here from... Uh, of course, lawmakers and the media in, in just the framing of this entire discussion when Ilhan Omar, looking at the actual facts, is clearly in the right. And one last point that I forgot to make. Where is this energy for Joe Manchin? Why isn't there this anger from Democratic leadership against Joe Manchin and his obstruction of any progress? Where is this energy for climate policy? Where is this energy to raise the wages? Where is this energy for Medicare for all? No. They use this energy simply to smear Ilhan Omar and just forget about everything else. They simply don't care about anything else. They don't care about actually helping people, but if they can throw one of their own under the bus to appease a donor, they will do that immediately.